Hey everyone, it's Kenji, and we're gonna make some caldo de costilla. This is a um, Colombian soup. They eat a lot of soup in Colombia. Um, Colombia is a very, very diverse country, sort of regionally and cuisine-wise and culturally, um, but this is a soup that is known pretty well throughout the country, um, and it's widely known as a hangover cure. Uh, I'm sorry, there's <laughs> someone's like digging in, <laughs> drilling into the brickwork in my house right now. Um, they're installing some mini splits, which uh, which I learned from Technology Connections, I'll link below, is uh, an extraordinarily efficient way of um, heating your home. Anyhow, Caldo Costilla, um, it's widely known as a hangover cure. Super, super simple. Um, if you've ever thought, like, I don't want to make broth because people told me to, you know, save my chicken bones in the freezer and store them up, and I gotta brown them, and I gotta trim them, and I gotta do this and that. Um, this is the type of broth that only takes a couple of ingredients, yet is extremely delicious. Um, virtually no time at all, uh, no, no active time at all to make. Um, so, so far I've gotten here some scallions, an onion that I split in half, a few cloves of garlic that I'm just gonna lightly smash. Okay. A bunch of cilantro. Boom. And a little bit of cumin seed. So about maybe a teaspoon or so of cumin seed. And finally, some beef. Um, so costilla is beef rib. These are short ribs. Um, so caldo de costilla, um, it's a, it's caldo means soup, you know, broth. Um, and uh, costilla's rib. So these are beef short ribs I'm sticking in here. Um, but you don't have to use short ribs. I've done this with oxtail, I've done it with shin. Um, basically any good braising, oh my God. <laughs> any good braising cut of meat, is go of beef is gonna work here. Um, you'll notice I haven't browned anything at all. All I did was stick it in a pot. And I'm gonna take it over to the sink, cover it with water. Very different from a typical sort of, you know, European style braised short rib dish or like a French style braised short rib dish where you're gonna brown everything first. Um, I guess there are some some French dishes, you know, like pot au feu where you're you're not browning the meat before you simmer it. Um, there's certainly some other European style um, soups like this, but I don't know many soups that, that are simpler than this. I mean, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about when you get this soup and where you get it um, when we come back, but <laughs> Already, I'm, I'm basically done with the prep. That's all we do, put it in there. We're gonna bring it up to a boil, um, reduce it to a simmer, and then we're just gonna let that cook until the short ribs are tender. So about two and a half to three hours or so um, of simmering. Uh, so basically all hands off. So far, I don't know, we've done what, three minutes of work? Virtually nothing, only a few ingredients, uh, and you'll see how it comes out. All right, so I'm gonna let this go. Um, if the water start, level starts to get too low, I might top it up occasionally, but um, as long as we're at a very, very bare simmer, so once it comes up to a boil, I'll reduce it all the way to low. I'll put the lid on, um, and uh, it should, uh, I shouldn't even have to add any water or anything like that. I'll just come back in. a Couple minutes, um, so I actually, um, I just remembered. So once this comes to a boil, um, just the first time, you kind of just want to skim off the scum. This is just like coagulated blood that's coming out of the bones, um, random proteins, minerals, and things that are getting trapped up there. Um, you don't really have to do this, um, but it will give your final broth um, a sort of clearer color uh, and a cleaner flavor. So just give it a little bit of a skim. Don't worry too much right now if you're getting much of that liquid underneath as well. You're mainly aiming for the scum at the top, but if you get some of the liquid underneath, that's fine. Um, you haven't really extracted that much flavor into it yet at this point. Um, so you're not, you're basically just, you know, skimming out water. You're not gonna be, not gonna be losing too much flavor if you accidentally get some of that liquid underneath. So don't have to be super careful at this stage. Just get most of the scum and uh, now I've brought my heat down to low. It's gonna be at a bare simmer like this, and I'm gonna cover it, and now I will be back in. Way longer than I said. I don't know, that was more than four hours, I think, because, well, all kinds of stuff happened. I had to, my, I had to take my, go to my daughter's school for her little birthday party, then my baby wouldn't go to sleep, and all kinds of stuff, but anyhow. Um, it doesn't really matter. So you want it to you want it to go until the ribs are tender. Ideally, you would stop it right when the ribs are tender. I want a little bit longer, but you know, short ribs, lots of connective tissue, lots of fat, so pretty hard to overcook them. Um, maybe if I cooked them for like another hour or two past this, they would start to dry out a little bit. But at this stage, they are good. So you can see a skewer should go right through them like that. Not much resistance at all, but they're not kind of like falling apart or shredding. Um, so what I'm doing now is I'm gonna take the short ribs out of here. 
including the bones. Um, some of them have fallen off the bone. That's totally okay. Um, oh, so like I, like I was saying, um, this is a Colombian dish. My, my wife is Colombian, um, and I we spend a good deal of time down there. The first time I had this dish was at, I think it was probably at my sister-in-law's wedding. I don't know, 2000... I can't remember when it was. It must have been like 2006, something like that. Um, it was at my sister-in-law's wedding, um, and... Uh, you know, it was a huge Colombian wedding, so hundreds of people, everybody dancing, and lots of salsa, lots of aguardiente, you know, the alcohol, the liquor there. Um, and uh, around midnight, um, these servers come out carrying big trays of caldo de costilla, so this beef soup, beef bone soup with potatoes. Um, the idea being that you drink it at midnight, and then the party can go on and on, um, which is exactly what happened. All right. So I've got my ribs out, um, and now I'm just gonna strain the broth. I wanna get everything else out of there. <clears throat> I'm gonna strain out this broth. Barely gonna make it in this pot. Yeah, we made it. All right, we made it. So there's this um, club in Bogota, outside of Bogota actually, in Chia, um, called um, Andres. Um, it's not, it's now. It used to be, I think, just a single location. Maybe there was one in one in Chia and one in Bogota. And now there's multiple locations, and it's kind of I think it got bought by a big company. And now it's multiple locations, but. Um, the one out in Chia still exists, and that's, you know, it's about a 30-minute drive outside of Bogota. And so people from Bogota would drive out there um, to party, and what happens is, at the end of the night, you know, you, you, you're out there partying until, say, 4 in the morning, um, and then you get out of the club, and uh, they have, all the food stands are ready. So there's places that serve, like, burgers, hot dogs, um, arepas, Colombian food, um, and, of course, also... Um, Caldo de Costilla. But what I've always found fun at this place is that it's kind of, you know, because it's so far outside of Bogota, they have these services there for people who get too drunk. Um, so one of them is that you can check your friends in. It's like a coat check. You can check your friends into this big tent with hammocks um, where they can sleep it off uh, and you get like a ticket, like just like a coat check. You get a ticket so that uh, nobody can come and claim your friend. Um, you have to be the one to claim them, or they have, or they can leave themselves. Um, and they also have this service called the um, Angel Service, where um, people will come and drive your car for you, drive you home in your own car, um, so that you have your car back home, uh, and uh, you don't have to have a designated driver. They're essentially your designated driver. They drive you home in, in your own car, and then um, at the end of the night, a bus goes around and picks them all back up and brings them again, so that they can drive other people home. Um, very well planned party. Anyhow, okay, so now I'm gonna, this broth you might notice we haven't seasoned it at all yet, so I'm seasoning it with some salt. And you can see, we didn't, you know, very, very simple, very few ingredients here, but you can see how kind of rich it got just from all the, um, all the connective tissue and stuff uh, that comes from those short rib bones. All right, now the final ingredients, and this is something you can do um, the, you know, the day after if you wanna serve this in the morning. You can cook these um, potatoes in there in the morning, um, or you can um, pre-cook them in there. I like to, I like to separate the ribs out uh, and cook the potatoes separately so that I make sure that I don't you know, accidentally overcook the ribs while the potatoes are going. But to be honest, you can put it all in, you, know, you can add the potatoes for the last half hour as the ribs are simmering uh, and it'll come out just fine anyway okay these are white potatoes you can use um you know colombia is the uh the andes um at least the andes regions of colombia are kind of the land of potatoes so you'll find hundreds of different types of potatoes things that you can't you don't really see in the u.s in the same way that like you know in the u.s we get so many different varieties of apples like way more than you get in most other parts of the world um you get lots of different types of potatoes uh, in the Andes. So the potatoes that they use there are typically these white potato for this type of dish are these typically these white potatoes that hold their shape pretty well, not super starchy. Um, so they don't like cloud up the broth and they hold their shape pretty well. Um, I'm using these 
uh, red potatoes I found. You could use something like Yukon Golds, white potatoes. You could use red creamers even, they would probably work fine. Um, but honestly, it doesn't matter too much. You just want something, you don't want to go with something, you don't want to use like a russet or something that's going to, you know, just completely sort of disintegrate in there. All right, our broth is seasoned, our potatoes are in. Now I'm just gonna let this simmer again uh, until those potatoes are cooked, so it's probably gonna take about 30 minutes, so I will see you again in Another few minutes. All right, so basically just until the potatoes are done. I don't know how long that was, maybe 10 minutes or so. So our potatoes are tender, cooked through, nice and soft. Um, I adjusted the broth, mm. seasoning a little more. You want it to be quite salty because um, the potatoes are gonna uh, need to be seasoned and the meat is also unseasoned. But here's how we serve it. We basically take one of our rib bones. By the way, if you're going to um, store this overnight, um, store the ribs under the broth. You want you don't want them to dry out like this. I'm only doing it like this because we're about to eat it just now. But the rest that I put away for tonight, I'm gonna to store the ribs under the broth. All right, and then potatoes. And broth in the bowl. Just like that. And I'm just gonna finish it off with some <clears throat> cilantro, green scallions, and that's the whole dish. Um, like a lot of Colombian food, it's very simple, but very, very delicious. Let's try it right here. One of the things I like about doing this, by the way, also is that this type of broth and short rib situation, or you know, whatever whatever beef you end up using, is very adaptable to other recipes. So I like to, on the second day, I sometimes like to add, you know, something like uh, a can of pozole and uh, some lime juice and some chopped onions and some minced cabbage, and then it's sort of like a um, a white pozole. Or you can re-simmer it for you know for like 15 minutes or so with some uh, like cinnamon and star anise and some warm spices, uh, and then add some you know pho noodles, and you end up with a um, something that's sort of like a Vietnamese pho. So super adaptable um, when you have like a very nice simple white broth, white you know clear broth like this, white as opposed to you know roasted broth. Um, Mm. And you can see, let me show you how tender this short rib is. Nice and fatty, and it's basically comes apart with a spoon. That's just how I like it. So not completely falling apart. Mm. I'm a sort of spoon tender. All right, I'm going to call my family down before I... Eat all this. Guys, gals, non-binary non pals, um, caldo de costilla, very typical Colombian dish, um, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. No dogs. Let's get you some. You're waiting there patiently. Let's get you a little bit. Sorry, guys. Here you go. Good girl. And here you go, man. Good boy. All right. Now, guys, gals, non-binary non pals, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.